What up, Gospel Diaries? Hey, guys. Man, I'm at Powerhouse Chicago, Bishop uh, McQueen, Keith McQueen's church, and we're about to do an episode here, and I'm with my, my guy right here, Brother Ronnell. Say hello. How you doing? Praise <laughs> the Lord. He is the executive pastor, and we're going to do a walkthrough to the church, so you all stay tuned. And welcome to Gospel Diaries, all right? Hey fam, praise the Lord. I am Pastor Ronnell Brooks. Welcome to the Powerhouse Church of Chicago, the global headquarters of the Powerhouse Global Network, where our bishop is Apostle Keith McQueen. We are one church in seven locations. It'll be my honor today to walk you through our Powerhouse Global Network headquarters and let you know how we do ministry on this side of Chicago. So when people come to Powerhouse, we have a slogan here. We say, welcome home. A lot of people, when they come, they have, they've been to other churches. They haven't found a place to call home. And we welcome people from all walks of life, sexual orientation, any any type of p p person that you are. We welcome you here at the Powerhouse Church Chicago. So come on in as we welcome you home. Welcome home. Oh, yeah. Who do we have here? This is our deaconess, Dominicia Collins. Yeah, she is one of the original members of Powerhouse Church of Chicago, I mean, and uh, Powerhouse Church of Indianapolis. This is Sister Deaconess Collins, Dominicia Collins. So we're going to welcome right on into our fellowship hall. So right when you come in, you have our fellowship hall. Come step down some stairs. And here we normally greet our people right here sister deaconess dominica collins will be the one to be greeting you welcome you home we always have a slogan here is welcome home you're going to hear that a lot today is welcome home because we believe that this is your home so you come here you come into our fellowship hall where you wait for our service to start our services are conveniently held on every wednesday night at 7 p.m for our midweek encounter and every sunday at 11 30 a.m for our sunday encounter we come in and we have a coffee machine over here that's ready for, for guests to come and to uh, partake in while they're waiting for the service to get started. And then we have ample seating waiting for the parishioners to wait until we make sure that when we get the sanctuary right, that it's conducive for you to experience God and then encounter God. One thing about Powerhouse is everything you come, whether it's on Wednesday or Sunday, you will encounter God because we believe that one encounter with God will change your life forever. And so we're in a ministry of changing lives and making sure that you know that you have a home here. Hello, my name is Deaconess Collins. I'm a member of Powerhouse Chicago. I have actually been a member of Powerhouse Indianapolis in Chicago since, Chicago since the beginning when we started in 2012. Uh, one thing I love about this ministry is that from the moment you walk in the door, you experience the love and the power of God. This is truly a no judgment zone in a place where you could truly grow into where uh, God is taking you. <laughs> All right, what's going on, Gospel Diaries? I am in a different setting uh, today, but I, I'm more than honored to be here with an innovator, an icon, a living legend already, Bishop Keith McQueen. How are you doing? I'm awesome, man. It's so good to see you. Man, likewise, you wear many hats. <laughs> oh, geez, Louise, yeah. Um, <laughs> I am whatever I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be. <laughs> wow. I hear you. Now, look, let, uh, my mind goes back to the first time that I walked into this edifice. Mm -hmm. Like, um, honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, but I know when I sat right there, probably, mm -hmm. the, probably one, two, three, five, four rows back, man, the spirit, I was inundated by the spirit, man. I mean, I just felt an anointing in this place. Let's talk about the ministry that you render here at Powerhouse. Amen. <laughs> um, well, uh, that's such a, a, a heavy question, you know. Um, here at Powerhouse, we are a prophetic ministry mm -hmm. that believes in pushing people into their destiny and their future. We're very intentional about welcoming all people. We're very intentional about creating space for those that have been marginalized mm -hmm. and those that have been rejected. And so this is just a ministry literally where you can come in and be directed into your prophetic purpose, mm -hmm. why you were born. Mm -hmm. Come into grips with how you were born, accepting how you were born and learning why you were born mm -hmm. and being maneuvered into that. So that is why this space exists. Mm -hmm. And you have dared you know, to be different, there are so many lives that could have been saved mm -hmm. 
had it been someone that took the courage to advocate for what's taboo, mm -hmm. you know, in the African American culture, well, our church culture around global, but yeah. pre predominantly within our African American culture. So I wanted to tell you face to face, <laughs> thank you so much for advocating, man. You know, uh, there are so many individuals that want to worship. I know this is a, 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 a song that we probably hear all the time, but it's true. Mm -hmm. There are people that really love God. They love the church, mm -hmm. but they're hurt yeah. by the church. So let's talk about your courageousness. Where, <laughs> what is the origins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh oh, is this? <laughs> that, I mean, man, woo, layers. Um, <laughs> Let's start from, okay. you know, I'm a product of the black church. Okay. You know, I was born and raised in the church, um, raised apostolic Pentecostal like you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, a great deal of who I am comes from the church. Mm -hmm. I love the church. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the negative experiences I have had, it was also a safe space for me. So navigating while gradually learning more about my truth was complex mm -hmm. because I learned very quickly that there are aspects of who I am that will never be accepted within worship spaces. Mm -hmm. You learn to conform, you learn to pretend, mm -hmm. you learn to operate within a paradigm, mm -hmm. um, the hierarchical structure of the church. And so um, I would say that I was perfectly content in hiding aspects of who I was in the sense of this is just what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You accept it because you don't know anything different. Mm -hmm. When you're introduced to something different is when it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. When you only know bondage, you don't know that that's bondage because there's no freedom to compare it to. Mm -hmm. When I was blessed with the opportunity to encounter individuals like myself mm -hmm. who were same gender loving, but also who had embraced their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. No one shared that with me. I was taught it's option A, mm -hmm. you choose to <laughs> walk in truth and you leave the church. Okay, okay. Or it's option <laughs> B, you stay in the church, you get elevated, but you lie. Mm -hmm. No one told me there was an option C, mm -hmm. that you can walk in your calling and you can walk in truth. Mm -hmm. Pastor who's on a mission to stop hate. <laughs> Any Sunday on the east side of Indianapolis, Pastor Keith McQueen is in the pulpit at Powerhouse Church at 41st and New York. And passionate about creating a space for all people and very intentional about doing that. The stained glass windows and pews make it look like a traditional Indiana church, but it's far from it. Powerhouse Church is a place where imperfect people can come uh, and create a synergy to become their best selves. And he's not your traditional pastor either. I am an openly gay pastor. I am an openly gay African-American pastor. I am an openly gay African-American pastor in Indiana. That creates a lot of complication. His husband started off as a church member and a friendship grew to a relationship and then marriage. You know, I think they might like him a little bit more than they like me. But it didn't all start that way. That was not immediately well received by people. Um, even to this day, uh, there's so much opposition that we often face, things that we've had to endure that has just been unbelievable. The focus of Powerhouse Church is to accept everyone. You don't have to come in here and pretend to be something you're not. You don't have to come in here and tell everybody that your life partner is your roommate. You can be honest about who you are because in order to approach God, you must first approach in truth. The Bible says you must worship God in spirit and in truth. Without your truth, your worship is incomplete. Keith says the mission of the church is only one thing, bringing people closer to God. He knows most pastors won't agree with him, but he has one message for them. To go into the world, as Jesus Christ said, and to preach the gospel to everybody. If you have decided that there's a certain group of people or persons that don't deserve to hear the gospel, then my friend. And so I decided I wanted to have both. Mm -hmm. And that journey um, took me through many places um, during my time in Atlanta. Uh, I received a prophetic word from God 
uh, it was about maybe October of 2011 mm -hmm. to relocate to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I didn't know anybody here. I had no friends, no family, um, no one. And um, I just didn't want to receive that prophetic word. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he would mind me saying this. This actually came from Bishop Marcus McIntosh. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, man, he missed it. That is not God mm -hmm. for me to go to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And um, something began to just trouble me. Mm -hmm. And um, February 2012, I made the decision to obey God and relocate to Indianapolis, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And we started Powerhouse Church with six people. Um, in Indianapolis, Wait a minute. Indiana. You said six people. Six people. Okay. okay. Yes. Go ahead. Six Go ahead. people. <laughs> Literally, and this is what's funny. It's with six people, mm -hmm. and they were all from other cities, other states. Like, mm -hmm. nobody was actually from Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. They had all received prophetic words within that time frame to go to Indianapolis. And there was something for them to do. And when I showed up, they said, this is why God sent us here. Mm -hmm. Let's birth it. Let's start it. And the Lord said it would be called Powerhouse. Mm -hmm. We started May 27th, 2012, mm -hmm. um, on Pentecost Sunday. And um, literally, we begin to see exponential growth. The mm -hmm. Lord began to bless the ministry tremendously. And today, we are now across the country mm -hmm. in seven cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have campuses and churches overseas, uh, Brazil, uh, South Africa, <laughs> in Kenya, mm -hmm. and Uganda, and expanding. So uh, God has really just taken this move in 10 years and used it to radically transform the world. It's amazing that people are catching on to this idea that I can walk in truth, but also carry power and have a relationship with God, authentic power. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people don't know what to expect when they come here. Mm -hmm. They're like, man, is it going to be a pride parade mm -hmm. or are they going to be waving rainbow flags mm -hmm. or what's going to happen? And they come and they're like, man, God is here. Mm -hmm. The authentic presence, like you said, mm -hmm. is in the place. So yeah. that's what we're about. Now, we're going to change the gears here. Get ready, Bishop. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Are you sure? Let's go for it. Yes, let's run. Bishop, yeah. okay. Many will... Will will attest well not attest they would put up fuss yeah. at the theology you yeah. know so walk us through the theology mm -hmm. of powerhouse absolutely um, that's a that's a loaded question mm -hmm. I think it's it's complex um, there first of all within the Christian faith there is no one church that's probably completely aligned with any church, whether mm -hmm. it's from a sociological perspective or a theological perspective. I would say um, our theology varies. You know, it goes from discussing the ontological nature of God mm -hmm. all the way to discussing, there was a sirens, we're in Chicago. <laughs> we're in Chicago, we're on the south side. It's, it's good, you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Yes, you know, it's it's it varies. You know, our 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 theological perspective it varies. You know, um, um, I would say specifically as it pertains to the affirmation of individuals, we hold strongly to the scripture that mm -hmm. says John three sixteen, mm -hmm. for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever that who believes, wait what did you say whosoever wait no you you said the man next door mm -mm, whosoever no, him, him too <laughs> <laughs> him too he he welcome too intentional about that not just from a cliche perspective oh, yeah. but to to deny an aspect or a particular person is to deny an aspect of God. Mm -hmm. The, the, the vastness of who God is, is expressed through our own individuality. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to, to see a holistic picture mm -hmm. of God, then it must include me. Mm -hmm. You cannot exclude me. Um, if you look throughout history, without getting into certain, certain depths, you look throughout history, at one point, everybody cries, Rehoboth, mm -hmm. make room for me. The Lord has made room for me. Um, in, at Pentecost, AD 33, mm -hmm. they said that Christianity was only for those that were Jewish. Mm -hmm. And they were shocked to see the, the, the expression of God being experienced by people who weren't from their background. <laughs> Bishop, someone comes, they're wounded, right? Yes. Did the Bende, right? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you deal with someone that's infected within, mm -hmm. that the Bende cannot, you know, just cover raped or uh, they threw me out of the church because I was 
Yeah, same loving. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you deal with those scars? Those oh, wounds? we have to be prepared to effectively deal with those scars and wounds. You know, I think it's interesting. I, I love, I love the idea of a band aid. You know, healing is not a one size fits all. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a complex, <laughs> it's a complex um, dynamic of being able to assign an appropriate process to a person's healing. Um, some healing comes instantly. Some healing comes with time. Um, some healing um, requires that you engage uh, that process in a particular way. So what we do in particular, and we deal with people who, I mean, deal with real life situations. Yeah. Powerhouse, what a lot of people don't know, is a healing and deliverance ministry. We mm -hmm. started out, truth be told, as a deliverance ministry. When you look at the old documents, our name was Powerhouse Church of Deliverance. So here at our ministry and at all of our campuses, we're very big on creating space to engage your healing process. Mm -hmm. um, we have healing teams, people who have been trained and equipped through our online university and teachings to be able to effectively help and counsel people, pray them through to deliverance, and to be able to give linkage to care. If it's something that we can't offer, we also have partnership resources to be able to direct them to what they need. It's a See the breath of God. See the plan of God. See the walls of Jericho coming down. See the land being restored. See the hand of God. See the heavens open. Lay your hands on your ears. Put your hands on your ears. Ear gates, I command you in the name of Jesus, shut down to the symphonic words of Satan and open up to the word of the Lord. Open up to the wind of God. Open up to the sound of the spirit. Open up to the symphonic moves of the Holy Ghost. Open, 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 open up and hear the voice of the Lord. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the root deliverance deals with the fruit. Healing goes down to what happened, um, the, the bondage, the deep hurt, the deep pain, and deliverance begins to strip away the coping mechanisms to deal with the pain. Oftentimes, churches will go to deliverance, but they're not equipped in healing. Bishop, stop. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. They do it. Bishop. They have no authority over the roots, so mm -hmm. they'll pick the fruit. So here's the thing. I can go out there right now to an apple tree and start ripping apples off of it. That won't stop it from producing apples again in its season. you got to attack that thing from the roots. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bishop, wow. That, that is a word, man. Wow. So look, basically what I wanted to do really was I wanted to document uh, at this uh, in this particular season, the history of Powerhouse. Yeah. And uh, you all are really going strong. I mean, how many churches do you have covering? Seven in the United States. We just took on 21 in Brazil. Um, South Africa, we are preparing for a great merger that's mm -hmm. going to expand our ministry and our network along with ministries in Uganda and Kenya. And so um, it's, it's a phenomenal work. We, we're growing by leaps and bounds. And um, it wasn't even necessary that, or, or per se, it wasn't our goal to be big. It was our goal to be effective. I think bigness was a consequence mm -hmm. of being effective. Mm -hmm. And um, it's part of the complexity of being effective is that we begin to produce something, a sound God begin to, to cause to come from us that people who don't even speak our language, mm -hmm. who are from other countries and cultures, could see the essence of this thing. And, and that is authentic inclusion, affirmation. That's real Pentecost because mm -hmm. Pentecost, the significance of any great revival wasn't so much about the miracles, the signs and the wonders, which is amazing. And we're seeing that happening here. Mm -hmm. But the significance of the revival was about who became included at the table. Azusa Street, a, a blind colored man, began to bring together the sons of uh, former slaves and the daughters of former slave owners. And under one great revival and, and move, the chains of, of, of years of slavery, and we're talking about 1906 in the midst of the probably we're right on the cusp of the reconstruction period and the industrial revolution we're seeing something phenomenal begin to happen before martin luther king was born in 1927 before you see people coming about that begin to lead us in the civil rights movement of the 50s and the 60s there's something great that happens because of one move of god mm -hmm. one encounter an open heaven an open portal 
what is happening here at Powerhouse is an open heaven, an open portal has been released in here. And we're seeing prophetic pictures and glimpses of what heaven looks like. Mm -hmm. With every great revival, we are being brought closer into the circumference of heaven, heaven coming to earth. Powerhouse is an example of heaven coming to earth and the revival spreading across the country and around the world. Mm -hmm. God is not loyal to a particular tradition, denomination, or culture. He is loyal to the agenda of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And those that have caught onto the agenda assigned to that space and time is where he releases grace. And uh, I'm cautious to the anointing. Could you please just give a prophetic word to Gospel Diary? Yes, 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 yes. I'll give a prophetic word to Gospel Diaries and to you. Mm -hmm. um, the word of the Lord started coming to me for you when I sat next to you. And I just really hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that there's a great work for the passion that you've been called to do. In 2023, what he wants to begin to do is to release upon you the grace of the scribe. The Lord has always called scribes in various times who found a passion to historically document. Historically, historical documentation has been designed by God to cause us to be able to mark where we have come, just like the seven feasts of the children of Israel. Read on it because I have called, oh, yes, I, I have. Hello, Gospel Diaries. If you would like to help and support to keep this content going, please follow the instructions on the screen and so into Gospel Diaries so we can continue to bring you this great content. Because I love doing it, but I need your help. <laughs> My phone didn't ring there.